the dribble. Dig two. Yes. Drive to the corner. Two up, three. Good. Step back through. <laughs> That's a good shot for three. Stepping through off the window, good. Stepping through the rain, drops and the finish on the right hand. And then it's going to be as well. And with back-to-back threes, the bonus, a double of the odd chance. pursuit of a top four finish in the Signet WNBL competition continues this afternoon when they take on ladder leaders Melbourne on home turf in a blockbuster contest. The Lynx are on a six game winning streak but their quest for a finals berth has taken a huge hit this week with the loss of superstar Sammy Whitcomb to injury. Can their winning ways continue without her or will the Boomers prove too strong as they continue their hunt for back to back titles. Jess Webster with you alongside four time WNBL champion Kelsey Griffin. Great to have you here Kelsey uh, for the second of a double header this afternoon and uh, we've got another great contest on our hands. We definitely do. The last game was fantastic between the Flames and the Fire and I expect no different between the Boomers and the Lynx. Like you said, Boomers want to go back to back. It's incredibly difficult to do and the Lynx are a powerhouse offensively. Um, obviously the admission of Sammy Whitcomb is huge. Um, her capability as a scorer and what she does as a leader for her team. But after freshly coming off a game from the Lynx, I can definitely say they do have a lot of firepower still. Absolutely. So, Sammy Whitcomb, uh, for those of you uh, unaware, she's got a back injury. Uh, she has returned to Perth, um, but they are confident she will play against Townsville on Wednesday. So, let's take a trip back a couple of days ago, a few days ago, when uh, Perth took on Bendigo. Kelsey, how was it? Uh, it was a big win for Perth as we uh, take a look at uh, some of the highlights from that contest. It was a de definitely a massive win for Perth. Um, I think they really came out firing and, and they did it by committee. It wasn't just Sammy Wickham or it wasn't just Lauren Scherf. In fact, it was really Atwell, Bibby, Sharp. Everyone came in and played impactful minutes for them. And I, I, re I reckon that's what Ryan Petrick really wants his side to be is having everyone coming in and having that offensive mindset. And they know they're, they're prolific three-point shooters. They're very capable, but they actually did it going inside and outside and really uh, forced B Bendigo into looks and positions they didn't want to be in. And so a lot of credit's due to Perth coming in. And they are the team finding form. It wasn't just the Bendigo game. They, their ability to beat Southside as well, who's a very informed team, um, really shows that they're in contention for that top four spot. And no game is easy in this WNBL. Absolutely. They'll certainly uh, be full of confidence this afternoon as they take on Melbourne. Of course, uh, Wickham, we can't underestimate her contribution to her side. Of course, 25 points last week, but 58 points in the last two weeks. So she'll be missed today, but it does give an opportunity for somebody else to step up in her place. One play for the Perth, as, as you've touched on, Kelsey, who's been a superstar and been in great form, is Lauren Scherf, and she plays her 200th match uh, this afternoon against Melbourne. Uh, what a player and, and what a contributor, uh, not only to the Perth competition, uh, but uh, the Perth, sorry, the Perth side, but the competition as a whole of course in her 10th season definitely and, and massive massive congratulations to Lauren Scherf anyone who can play 200 games in a competition shows their dedication to their craft and also longevity um, is something that I don't think should be underestimated so for her ability to impact not only on the international stage for when she's represented Australia but also here in Australia her impact and um, contributions to basketball is fantastic so massive congratulations to to Lauren Scherf I had the privilege of playing alongside with her winning a championship with her at the Caps and for me personally be, to be able to see her development and especially come into her own um, for Perth I think it's been really great she shows her ability um, she's quite the the facilitator in their offense uh, Petrick puts a lot of um, confidence in her to run things through her not just as a you know the end result which is often what post players are but actually as a facilitator and um, really being able to see her come through uh, as you take a look at the uh, Melbourne Boomers starting five and I think for for Melbourne this will be a really really good game for them um, they match up well against Perth I think and it'll be I think it's going to come down to defense if, if Melbourne plays the defense that we've become accustomed to Melbourne Melbourne playing over the past few seasons um, it could be a long night for Perth but on the flip side if Perth is able to move the ball well get out in transition and shoot the three um, it definitely could be it could go Perth's way and from the Perth point of view without Whitcomb who are you looking to, to stand up well, I think it, it has to be by committee. The league is too good for one person to be able to fill uh, shoes, especially as big as Sammy's shoes. So I think 
Um, Alex Sharp's done incredible things for Perth off the bench, oftentimes in her second efforts and what she can do on the glass, but also getting downhill and her ability to shoot the three. But I expect also um, bench minutes to become really important because uh, Melvin plays too physically and too strong um, for you to only go five deep. So it'll be interesting to see what Petrick does and who comes off the bench first um, for the Lynx. And how do you see this one playing out? I think it's going to be a great competition. Well, we're underway. It's the Boomers taking on the Lynx. The Lynx trying to finish top four. The Boomers, well, they're two and two in their past four games. And I want it, their winning ways to continue as Nelson Adoda tries to put up the first bucket of the evening. That one has missed as Bobby takes it down the other end. Sure for three. And that's offline. And that's what Alex Sharp does. She gets she gets on the glass. She gives second opportunities. I think it'll be interesting to see how Chris Lucas decides to attack the deep drops that Perth does defensively and what Lauren Scherf likes to do. So it'll be an interesting matchup, definitely a strategic one between the two head coaches. Ryan to inbound. Here's Scherf working on her opponent. That's a nice finish. The Lynx are on the board. That's really great. I feel if Laws can get away from doing her turnaround fadeaway and going into her baby hooks, that'll make her such a dominant force inside. So it's really great to see you're trusting that. Here's Nelson Adota working on Scherf. Misfires on that occasion and Sharp cleans it up. And it's clear Chris Lucas is making an inside emphasis going to a Dota early and testing Lauren Schiff's defense. And so far, Schiff's done a great job. It's a lovely finish from Atwell. So a good start to the links, and they'll want to start early, particularly against this strong Boomers outfit as Wallace for a long range two hits back. And Christy Wallace is capable of that. That's her bread and butter, that elbow jump shot, which is what the Perth Lynx ball screen defense gives up. So it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing throughout the course of the game. And Ryan coughs it up. And good battle with Wallace. He gives it to Mitchell. Off the glass for two. Great recognition from Mitchell. Saw Scherf closing out and knew she could get to the basket. And after a fast start to the Lynx, we're all on even terms, four all. In the opening minutes. Bibby to Sharp. To Scherf. Can't get that one to drop in as Mitchell takes it down the floor. And she wants to go herself. And the C's just part for her, but she misses the shot. Perth's probably lucky to get away with that one, not converting. Mitchell's got such great strength and poise. And um, definitely not a shot you want to be giving her all night. Here's Ryan, pass inside, looking for Scherf, but they turned it over. Some stagnant offenses here. It'll be interesting to see. George loses the handle on it, but she has been fouled. It's good recognition by Kayla, fake the handoff. That's something Kayla's definitely capable of doing. What an incredible season she's having. Is she up there with the MVP contender in your mind? She definitely is. I think, you know, for her, I think that Kayla's passing, I think, has really, she's always been known as a great passer, but this season especially, I think with Chris Lucas's system, she's been a facilitator as much as a scorer. And you see it there. She's happy to facilitate. I think having Mia Murray, even though she's not playing now, has been great addition, and they play so well together too. Mitchell with the rebound. Looking for George. Pass. Just a little errant. It'll be a Lynx ball. And that combination between George and Mitchell had just been absolutely fantastic for the Boomers this season. Of course, Mitchell number one in the competition for average points and George number two. It's certainly a potent office and offensive end. It definitely is. And I think that's where... They've had games, though, where Mia stepped up, Nelson Nodota stepped up. So while they're the constants, there's lots of players that in their starting five that can impact the game. What I guess makes an interesting subplot to this contest is Perth. They're the best rebounding team in the competition and have the best individual player. And that stat and Scherf is, is a long range three attempt from Wallace is just on offline. Ryan taking it down the floor. Kicks it out to Sharp, to Bibby, and now Scherf steps back on the three. Falls just short. And it's still alive. Great hustle by Sharp, but 
her teammates weren't around there to help help pick her up pick up the ball. Some sloppy play by both teams to start, but you have a sense this game's gonna break open. Great patience by Mitchell, just keeping her dribble alive, playing through the contact and finishing. She loves to get downhill on her left hand. That's gotta be in the scout notes for Petrick. Boom is now lead by four. The Lynx scored the first four points of the game. Melbourne have worked their way into it nicely. And Scherf kicks it out for Ryan. That one's off the rim, sharp with the rebound. Great work. The finish and one. And that's what she that's what she does. I've been so impressed with Alex Sharp this year and her role off the bench and what she's done, or whether it's in the starting lineup. Perth shoots a lot of threes and they shoot a lot of quick threes. And and that that can be detrimental unless you have someone that's so committed to doing the hard work, cleaning up the glass, um, getting you extra possessions, and that's what Alex Sharp does. And while she might not go down as a leading scorer, she's certainly someone that you'd appreciate having on your team who's prepared to do all that hard work. In the top 10 for average rebounds per game, she averages the 9.5 points and is a great free throw shooter, 95%. And made no mistake on that occasion as well. Here's Burrows for Mitchell, Nelson Adota. But uh, Mitchell gets it back. Back to Nelson Adota. She finds the finish for two. I think that's going to be important for Melbourne um, to put themselves in a chance to win this game is getting multiple players going and exploiting that dro deep drops defense that Perth often often plays. Another offensive rebound from Perth. That's going to be something Chris Lucas is going to want to address with his team. And certainly tell you, you don't want to give them second chance opportunities because they will find the three point line and they will light it up. Wallace down the other end. And this lead now is out to five. Here's Burrows for Perth to clinch Hoycard. What a game she had last time. They were out here, and that's a great three from Atwell. It's almost automatic if you go under screen. Amy Atwell is going to shoot it, and more often than not, it seems like she's going to make it. So certainly something that Melbourne won't want to do all game. And man, that's what Kayla's been doing all season. That is her bread and butter, that turnaround jumper on the baseline. She's looking at the floor. It's going up, and it's probably going to go in. Here's Scherf, kicks it out. Atwell wants another three. Can't find it on this occasion. George cleans it up and off to Wallace. Gives it back to George. That's off the rim. Four points the margin into the last five minutes of the first term and Atwell goes bang for another three. Oh my goodness, that is a tough shot, but shooter's gonna shoot. Great job, great recognition from Amy Atwell. If she can shoot it, might as well. It's been a great contest early between these two sides. Plenty on the line. Nelson Adota working on Scherf, and it's a great effort. It really is. She knows Scherf's going to play deep, drop, probably not going to contest it, and she's, she's a capable shooter in that mid-range area. As Wallace goes herself. Great stuff. Wally's testing the Lynx transition defense. Um, certainly are prepared to run offensively, but Wally's testing them to see if they want to get back defensively. Burrows charges, and she picks up a foul. That, that'll be important for, for Melbourne, how they're going to defend the on balls. I think, unfortunately, for Wally there, she got caught up with Lauren Scherf and ended up falling to the ground, which allowed for separation in that action. But Nelson Adota is a really important part of what, what the, the Boomers do, so we cer certainly wouldn't want her picking up too many cheapy, cheapy fouls down the stretch. And as you can see, Davidson's come in for Nelson Adota. Wouldn't want to get her in foul trouble. Taya Burrows at the line. 2020 Perth Lynx Youth Player of the Year. And she's really developed nicely over the past couple of years. She really has, and, and she's really she's always been quick. But I think what's what's been great to see this season is her, her poise that she can play with with her speed. So um, it's one thing to be a fast player, but then to be able to play at those two tempos or slow down for your finishes and um, also then to be able to facilitate. But she's playing a really good role um, especially for coming in for Robbie Ryan to be able to, oftentimes when she comes in for Robbie Ryan, to be able to 
changed a bit the tempo of the game or what they play with. Now they'll be playing alongside each other in the absence of Sammy Whitcomb. But it's always great when you can see young players who have developed in the league get those minutes, get those opportunities, and, and show all that hard work that, that, they, that goes most likely unnoticed unless, um, unless you get those opportunities. So if you've just joined us, Sammy Whitcomb out of the Lynx lineup due to a back injury. So they are without their superstar this afternoon. But they've started pretty well. It's really hard when such a, a, a key cog comes out of a side uh, to kind of plug that hole, but that, they seem to have settled rather nicely. Well, they definitely have, and I think that goes to, to um, Coach Petrick's system. Um, everyone clearly knows, you know, if they're a shooter, they can shoot, and what Lauren Scherf is going to do, what the, what the bigs are going to do in this system, and so when you have that kind of confidence and you know what your role is and you know the style of play, yes, Sammy becomes a huge omission, and I can't take enough away from that. But the fact that you know what you can do when you come off the bench, I think that gives you a sense of confidence um, coming in, and that, that shows great preparation from a coach and a system standpoint. And in this competition, you can't rely on too few. You've got to really have a team effort to go all the way in this competition. Definitely. Depth is really, really important. Um, and you know, instilling that confidence in your depth. You know, It might be like a situation where there's a late omission. You don't know you're going to play, but if you've been training and practicing Taylor Burrow's getting downhill to her left hand like she's capable of doing. Um, if you've been training, preparing that way, then then you're ready for it when, when your number gets called and your teammates have confidence in you. Great start to Burrow's. A couple of, couple of free throws and field goal there. Wallace to George, gets it back, unleashes for the three, it's offline. Perth with a rebound. It'll be interesting to see if they keep switching. If Oh, another foul. If the Lynx keep switching, if they are able to get that inside-outside game established and perimeter shooting will become really important for the Boomers if, if that's what the Lynx are prepared to give up. But I think this is great from Burroughs as well as, you know, in her minutes, putting the other team or putting the Boomers in foul pressure, getting to the line. If you can rack up a few cheap fouls on, on players in, in your minutes, you know, that could pay big dividends down the stretch for your team in the fourth quarter. Um, not to mention, you know, could you potentially be going to the foul line earlier in the quarter as a team? So great minutes from her off the bench. Absolutely. Her season high is seven points. She had six against Bendigo last week. She's already equaled that. We've got two and a half to play in the first term. So great start to the Burrows and the Lynx have drawn within one. Shot out of the blocks for the first four points of the game. Melbourne have had control since then, but they've really tightened things up on the eve of quarter time. Yeah, and I think for Melbourne, it's gonna it's gonna come down to their their transition defense because everyone knows Perth wants to get out and run and wants to shoot the three, so that's gonna be a real emphasis for them for the rest of the game. So Mitchell draws some contact, and that was just Tiff Mitchell identifying she had the mismatch. Oh, she, she got a foul. Is it? Oh, Tiff, Offensive foul. Offensive foul on Tiff Mitchell. I was going to say it was a great recognition identifying the mismatch, but apparently the officials thought there was too much contact outside the cylinder on that one. It's an interesting call. And down the other end, and it's a foul against Melbourne again. Have a couple of free throws to come. Well, and what's what's really interesting, I suppose, is you know when you're when you're scouting Perth and you're thinking about playing Perth, you think about how great of a three-point shooting team they are because they are that. But what's happening here is they're getting downhill on on balls or in transition, causing teams to collapse and or causing the Boomers to collapse, and then either facilitating with a pass or getting on the rim and going to the foul line. So bit different side of the Perth Lynx, but sh clearly showing what a dynamic offense they have. And Edwards off the bench now has a couple of free throws. So getting some good contributions early in the absence of Sammy Whitcomb from some of their bench players. Really great ball pressure up the floor from the Lynx there, causing a turnover. Didn't pay off in that, ca in that case, but um, Melbourne might need to send some help especially if Christy Walls is off the bench, but great attack by Mitchell. So hard to stop. Really hard to stop when she gets uh, going downhill, for sure. So a minute and a half left. Ryan off the glass. It's a lovely shot. 
I feel like Robbie Ryan's really starting to adjust to the league as well. Oh, great, Rick. Ooh, ooh. Unfortunate by Tiff Mitchell, but Robbie Ryan's, I think, taken a bit as most imports do to adjust to the league. And now it's really found her stride. Uh, it's really playing important minutes for, for the Perth Lynx in that point guard spot. So we might have some issues with our scoreboard on screen, but it is Perth by three. It's just updated now. So a minute left in this opening term. And that's a travel call. So Melbourne have turned it over. Yeah, I think this is a, a good substitution from Chris Lucas. I think he's trying to get Christy Wallace breaks early where he can um, so she doesn't have to play full 40 minutes. But they need someone out there that can really control, run the offense, get, get the ball through hands, and, and be quite deliberate. Three-point attempt is offline. Good child cleans it up. Here's Wallace. George for Mitchell. Thought once, thought twice, and nailed the shot in the end. It's really good balance. I don't, for those that don't play basketball, being able to stop and have that kind of body control is actually quite difficult. And Tiff Mitchell does a really good job of it. Ryan kicks it out to Gandini. Edwards is offline and it is off the fingertips of George. So I think it'll remain a Lynx ball. Definitely looks that way. That's I think something the Boomers are really going to have to clean up. Um, can speak from experience. Second chance, you do not want to give Perth Lynx second chance opportunities. They're just too lethal of an offense. 15 seconds left. And Perth. Find a late score here. This is Ryan calling the shots from the top of the arc. Goes inside, has a couple to beat. In the end, turns it over. Great defense from Melbourne as Wallace tries the impossible. That hit the rim. That was a fair attempt, but no score. So it is quarter time here. Melbourne taking on Lynx, and it has been a scintillating start from both sides, and the Lynx hold the slim advantage, 23 to 22 at the first break. Yeah, I, I think for Chris Lucas and his side from the Boomers, they're, they're probably going to want to talk about their, their offensive execution and, and what they can do um, to expose, I suppose, the ball, the deep drops ball screen defense that Perth does and kind of their saggy man defense, how they can, how they can um, get the shots they want, I suppose, and who they want to get shots for. And I think on the other end, you know, Petrick would probably be, Ryan Petrick would be really happy about his team's execution um, and continuing to get downhill, get to the foul line. His bench production was great. Um, and I think he'd have a lot to be happy about. Absolutely. It's a great contest so far as you take a look at some of the top uh, scorers for Melbourne. Mitchell has started well with 10. No surprises there. And Wallace is also added six. Nelson Adota has uh, four. And for Perth, uh, Atwell leading the way with eight. And Burrows started well with six. As you take a look at uh, some of the key stats to quarter time, Kelsey. Yeah, and look at that. You know, 11, 11 three-pointers in a quarter. You know, they're on track to shoot 44 this game. So Perth is not afraid to get their shots up, especially from the three-point line. And that's where that rebounding, that defensive rebounding is going to be so important from the Melbourne Boomers because... It's a bit uncharacteristic to other teams that you might play. So they get people to the, uh, Perth gets people to the glass and they get these second ch chance opportunities. So I think Melbourne cleans up that side of things and are able to execute a little bit better down the stretch. And Chris Lucas would probably be a little bit happier because when you look at their field goals, when you're shooting 58% from the floor, you want to get more shots because you're shooting at a really high clip. So that would be my guess what the adjustments they'd be making. Yeah, those three-point uh, starts are interesting in particular. Coming into today's game, Melbourne, uh, they have the, the best three-point percentage in the competition at 42%, but Perth, while they're... 10% sort of uh, worse off in that statistic. They've actually put up about 70, over 70 more three-point attempts than Melbourne. So even though Melbourne are a little bit more accurate in that statistic, at Perth, they, they take their shot when they uh, when they see it open. So, there you go. <laughs> it's as if you had Amy, yeah, as if Amy <laughs> Atwell heard you. Um, and that's that's what Perth does. They spread you. They want to get you into rotations, and they they trust that the they'll make the extra pass, and their shooters will knock down their shots. 
So a great start to the second term from Perth. Mitchell wants to respond at the other end. It's off the rim. Nelson O'Doda got the rebound and draws contact. That's great from Nelson Adota. She can have a huge impact on this game if she's relentless on the O glass and the D glass. That's going to be really important, I think, for Melbourne if, if they want to be in it at the end and give themselves the best chance of winning this game is their ability to rebound. And she's someone who's very, very capable of doing that and being that impactful player, as is uh, Kayla George. She's grown so much this season as well. She really has. And I think um, what's been great in my time in the WNBL is seeing, you know, Imports come in, WNBA, first year, second year WNBA players come out and use the WNBL to benefit. Wow, Amy Atwell, another three-point shot. They're going to want to find her in transition, but WNBA imports coming out and expanding their game, growing their game, and using the WNBL as an awesome league that they can do that in. So a couple of three points from Atwell as uh, we go to a timeout here in the second term. This timeout is brought to you by CTM Sport. If you're considering traveling interstate with your basketball team this year, make sure you consider CTM Sport for a competitive, innovative and customized travel solution that puts your team on top. Visit ctmsport.com.au to learn more. So our first timeout of the match and it's come at a time where Perth have come out in this second quarter with a bang. They lead by six, Kelsey Griffin. Well, I think Atwell know, knows that she probably needs to be fearless when it comes to her shooting. And she's a very capable shooter, so why shouldn't she be? But in the absence of Sammy Wickham, they're going to need to create that scoring from somewhere, and she's certainly up to the task. And I think for Chris Lucas in this timeout, he's definitely telling his players that in transition, it is not matchup man-to-man. It is find people and get them off the three-point line. Yeah, Sammy Wickham, uh, number two in the competition for average three points made. Atwell, 14 points so far this match. She has converted four of six three-point attempts so far. So definitely stepping up in that role. Well, she's always been a great three-point shooter, but she's on fire at the moment. And so are the links. They definitely are. So I imagine, you know, Chris Lucas has been coaching in this league for a long time. I have no doubt he's made some adjustments in this timeout. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Nelson O'Doda for a long range two. That's offline. And that's the shot that the Perth Lynx are willing to give up. In Ryan Petrick's system, he's saying, can you beat us by shooting these long range twos? He's at well again. Should have stepped back for the three. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's better defense from the Boomers, forcing her into a, a difficult shot. It's lovely from Wallace. And that's her bread and butter. That's what she can do is get those elbow jumpers in transition. Four points the margin. Six. Nearly every game in the run home is a must-win game for Perth as Scherf goes for a three. And she misses as Mitchell races down the other end, passes it off to Nelson and Dodo, and that's better from Melbourne. That's what they would want to be doing is, you know, making the links shoot tough shots, get out rebound and then get out in transition. Bibby to Scherf. Now to Sharp. Out to Atwell. This time, oh, that's a lovely drive and, and finish. Not much pressure though from the Boomers. Great take by Amy Atwell. Knowing she's a shooter, knowing there's gonna be hard closeout, but not settling for the tough shot, getting downhill, great finish. Good child. Oh. That one bounces out. Definitely another capable shooter for the Boomers. Ryan. And she gets one as well. So she's off to the line. She is. And I believe that's foul number two on Tiff Mitchell. That's definitely something um, she doesn't want to pick up any more in this first half. If uh, Chris Lucas keeps her out on the floor, she's so important to what they do. And especially not fouling a jump shooter. That's something you never want to do. Makes it count. This is now a healthy seven point lead as Ryan has a rest. And I like that from Ryan Petrick. You know, Robbie Ryan was playing great, but he knows he, he doesn't want her to get zero in the tank. Oh, oh, unlucky pass there. Oh, good child stays with it. Unfortunate <laughs> not to get it to go down, but I like Taylor Burroughs brings a spark off the bench, so I think that's great substitution. Atwell wants more points. Brilliant. My goodness. 
I feel like at some point there needs to be a recognition that she is not missing and we're not letting her catch the ball. That's five three-pointers now for Atwell. Nelson Adota working on Scherf. That's a tough shot to make, but she gets it. That's a great move by Nelson Adota, being able to, to use her size and length, go baseline, use the rim for protection. She's capable of doing that every time down the floor. Here is Burrows into the action. Misfires on that occasion. This leads now out to eight to the links. It'll be interesting. Melbourne's an experienced team. They'll, they'll settle in, they'll make the adjustments. The Boomers have an incredible coaching staff that have been in the league for a long time. So certainly a lot of game left in this one. will be interesting is what adjustments are made and, and what do the Boomers do to, to stem Amy Atwell's impact on this game. Here's Wallace. What can she manufacture? Gives it to Brewster, who's in on the action. Nelson Adota for two. She's offline. Bibby cleans it up. Here's Burrows. Started well in the first quarter. Gives it to Scherf. And now At Atwell for three. Bouncing, bouncing. Bibby with the cleanup and draws contact. You almost thought that was 100% going to bounce in just because of the kind of zone that Amy Atwell is in. But that's what the Lynx do. So Amy shoots it because she should shoot it because she's on fire. But you have uh, Chloe Bibby and you have um, Alex Sharp crashing the O glass. So even when your shooter that's on fire doesn't make it, the Lynx are bought in to punishing you on the O glass. So credit to those players for doing the dirty work when Amy Atwell is absolutely feeling it and you expect her to make it every time. Bibby gets the first attempt, a 71% free throw shooter. She's also had a great season, makes two from two. She's number eight in the competition for average points per game with 16.3, another great contributor for the side. Six minutes left here in the second term. Marge is now at to 10 the way of Perth. Melbourne need a response. Here's George from Brewster from the corner. That is sensational. That's a huge shot. It almost seemed like Perth Lynx were in a bit of a zone. I couldn't tell if it was their saggy man defense or if it was actually a zone there showing a different look. And that was their first three-pointer. It's down the other end. Burrows adds a couple more. Wow, another offensive rebound. Just relentless from Perth Lynx. Melbourne, two from two in their past four games. Do we read any, anything into that form line, do you think? Oh, I think in this competition, you have to you have to take it every game at one at a time. And uh, the form that teams are in changes also where they're at in their season. Some teams have been playing lots of back-to-backs or close to back-to-backs or multiple games in the seasons. Other teams are having a week off in preparation. So I think it's important never to read into too much, but um, to take each game one at a time and prepare for that team in that moment. Also, players coming in and out with, you know, injuries or different things happening, COVID, different situations. So you just have to respect every team on the night. So Burrows shot a three a couple of moments ago. Here's Mitchell. One's off the rim. And Tiff Mitchell will rarely see a wide open lane all game tonight just because Lauren Scherf is going to sit in the key. Great pass by Lauren Scherf. Speaking of what she does defensively, she can pass the ball offensively. So we know what a quality outfit the Boomers are. We know they're going to keep coming at you and coming at you for four quarters, but they let a lead slip against uh, Bendigo last match. And now they're facing a def deficit here as we enter the last five minutes of the first half. Are there danger signs? Absolutely not. I think, you know, they're, they're too smart of a team. They have too much experience. If anything, um, they probably become more powerful with each loss because they learn more from it. So um, losses in season aren't necessarily a bad thing because there's such great learning opportunities. It's um, only bad to lose when it's the grand final. <laughs> Certainly a quality outfit like Melbourne. You can never write them off. Gandini at the line. And the Lynx now out to an eight-point lead. It was up to ten. 
Mitchell out to George for three. That nails it. That's huge, and that's going to be important for the Boomers. Uh, if Kayla can get going from three, which she is so capable of do doing and has done such a great job this season, that's going to make it hard for Lynx to stay in their saggy man defense and for Lauren Scherf to stay in the key if the Boomers start making some outside shots. And while they don't shoot a lot of threes, doesn't mean they have to shoot a lot of threes, but it certainly makes the defense have to adjust. So as we head to a timeout, this one's brought to you by Signet to stay connected with the latest WNBL news and social highlights and keep your favorite tech charged up at home or on the go with Signet's extensive range of charging products and digital accessories. And once again, a massive thank you to Signet for powering the WNBL with high quality tech this season. Make sure you explore their range at signet.com. So a better couple of minutes to the Boomers. They've cut into this deficit. Kayla George, she can certainly fire three points when she wants to. She is, uh, as we look at some of her stats, she's number one in the competition for average three points made per game with 2.7. That was her first of the afternoon. Well, it has been interesting. In, in some of Kayla's biggest games she's had this season, she actually relatively has a, or has had a quiet first half and then just pours it on in the second half. So she's not someone that's going to necessarily force the issue. She, she plays to facilitate her teammates, I think, kind of lets the game come to her, um, does what's required. And, and at this point in time, I think she's recognized she needs to be a little bit more aggressive, certainly from the perimeter. But it also depends on, you know, what offense they're running, what looks they're getting. Tiff Mitchell's been able to get downhill, which has been really good, hasn't been able to convert maybe at the clip that she would like but there's always going to be someone in the paint waiting for her. So how can the Boomers find that extra pass and get to the open person? A five-point lead to the visitors. Four and a half to play in the first half. Ryan looking for Scherf. Great defense from George, but couldn't keep it in play. It'll be a Perth ball. Important defensive possession for the Boomers. Equally important offensive possession for the Lynx. Especially with Amy Atwell on the bench, who's going to stand up and score for, oh, turnover there. A fumble from Ryan. Gives possession to Melbourne. Gives Mitchell out to Wallace. Gives it to Mitchell from the corner. And it is no score. So couldn't quite see the call. Yeah, I wasn't sure who that was on. Th this will be interesting from the Boomers. This attacking on the first side, yes, Tef, uh, Tiff Mitchell is absolutely dangerous going downhill. But you want to shift the Perth Lynx, make them play side to side, get the ball moving. It'd be really important so you can attack their gaps. Here's Mitchell again, working on Ryan. That is a missed attempt from Brewster. Great pass from Mitchell. Realized there was help defense. Ryan falls just short. She gets it back though. Great work from Clinch Hoykar to keep it alive. Scherf back to Ryan. Now works herself inside. Lovely finish. And that's another offensive rebound that led to an extra possession again for Perth Lynx. Going to definitely be a point of emphasis for the Boomers moving forward. Amy Atwell coming back in alongside Chloe Bibby. So now having some more perimeter scoring back on the floor. Mitchell. Have to work hard for that. It makes it count. It's really good from Tiff Mitchell with uh, Laws uh, Scherf moving back to the bench. Ryan for a three-point attempt. My goodness, she's really add that, added that to her game as the season's developed. Mitchell straight down the other end, gives it to Mitchell. She also wants three points. She misses, though. So the points are flowing. It's been a great battle so far. That is excellent from Forster. It's great transition offense from the Lynx, testing the Boomers to get back after an early three-point shot. 
And that's where it can be really dangerous playing the links. If you if you start to play their style, early shots, quick shots, um, they can really run it down you at the other end. George adds two more. So the margin is back to eight. Lynx restored their 10 point advantage. There's Atwell back into the action, ran into a brick wall in the form of George. Takes it down the other end, could have fired for three, but they share it around. Wallace now kicks it out to Mitchell. She draws contact and they get the field goal. That was really good from the Boomers from a defensive standpoint. They're able to get a turnover. Probably could have gotten an easier shot in transition, but they didn't settle for a rush shot. Instead, gave the ball to Tiff and she created down um, downhill and got Brewster an easy bucket. I think for the Lynx, looking at how they can continue to get keep the ball moving, um, you wouldn't say there were a lot of flaws in their offense um, early on in this half, so I think it's continuing to do what's been working for them. So as we head to a timeout, Mitchell's up to 12 points for the Boomers. Nelson Adota steady on nine, and Atwell hasn't she started brilliantly in this first half with 19, including five three-pointers from eight attempts. She's certainly taking her chances and making them count, and Ryan as well with the 10 points. Absolutely, Atwell, my goodness, uh, the shooting display that she is putting on. But also, I mean, we talk about her three-point, but then that's opened her up to getting to driving lanes and getting downhill too, so she's showing what a versatile scorer she is. And Robbie Ryan as well, I, I alluded to earlier that she's um, you know taken a bit to adjust to, to the WNBL and, and fair enough. It usually does for most imports when they come out here and play. And so I think she's really peaking and playing some of her best, best basketball at the right time as the Lynx are, are making a push for, you know, a top four spot. Yeah, such a crucial game for them. And, and next round as well, they take on Townsville twice. So that'll really shape the ladder. At the moment, they are pressing and pressing hard, have won six in a row. In really great form, really great form, tough to play defensively. Um, they really test your defensive principles and, and make you second guess your, your adjustments and your schemes because you know there's so many scorers on the floor. Um, and so it really comes down to what team is really going to play great defense against them. I think that's the only way that you can disrupt the run that the Perth Lynx are currently on. So Boomers controlled the first quarter, but Perth have really hit back here in the second. Their lead is six. Mitchell from the corner. Perth ball. That's great execution. That's a great look, look for Tiff Mitchell. She's um, added the three ball to her game. She has been shooting the three ball relatively well this season, which makes her even more difficult, difficult to guard. What I liked that um, Melvin's kind of gone away from. They did. They they have an elbows action where they get Kayla George on a back screen. I think especially with Lauren Scherf not being in the game at the moment, really looking at how they could attack inside would be to their benefit. But I understand when you're getting wide open threes for Tiff Mitchell, that's also a really good look. You make a good point. She's number three in the competition for her three point percentage, shooting at 50%. So when she wants to have a go at it, she's normally quite deadly. Absolutely. You'd certainly take a wide open Tiff Mitchell three if you could, if you're the Boomers. Win the ball back here. Wallace to Nelson Adota. Wants to give it off to Good Child. Good defense. Very good defense. That's that's what the Perth Lynx are going to give you. Contested dribble jump shots. So it's it's tricky. You don't want to get baited into that shot because that is what they give up. Great heads up play by Robbie Ryan. In fact, I think that's that was Ortlep who was out there. My apologies. And congratulations to her. She's a, a new signing for the Melbourne Boomers. Um, previously played for Adelaide. I believe also dabbles in the AFLW as well. So a very talented athlete. Um, so it's exciting to see her back in the league. It certainly is. Here's Bibby. Brilliant shot. Boomers, they have lapses on defense like that. Perth Lynx will, will punish you. I think that's better from Kayla presenting a post inside. I think that'll be really important. Here is Ortlep. And now Nelson Adota. That's great work. 
really good footwork. I mean, that's going to be the important part for the Boomers is, is who do they give that post up to and, and who, who are they going to try to punish down low. 20 seconds left, shot clock down to 10 for Perth. Need to put a shot up and it's Atwell, the right person for the job. My goodness, she is feeling it. That is impressive. What a performance is George down the other end. She can't add a bucket. So it is half time here at Parkville and what a contest we have on our hands. It is Perth fighting for a position in the top four, taking on the defending champions, and they lead 56 to 46. And incredibly... 53 to 46 points. <laughs> and it's an incredible uh, showing from the Perth Lynx to back this up too after playing a game recently. And to come, it's not easy to play Melbourne on their home court either, so you have to give a ton... It is the second of a double header on this Sunday in the Signet WNBL competition. We already saw a thriller between Townsville and Sydney. Are we heading in the same direction here? It is Melbourne taking on Perth and they lead at the halftime break. Stay with us. We've got the second half action coming up next. to three of 11 shooting so far in this game. Mitchell splits the double, slicing through. That is classic Tiff Mitchell. In transition, two on two for Melbourne. Nice Euro step on the left hand. With such confidence at the moment, Ali Wilson. Mitchell again off the dribble, crossing on McKay. Too slick. Smart play if you can get the call. Speaking of smarts, I mean, we can back on the floor, driving hard, scoring straight away. Now Ryan, the wicket from way downtown. Oh my goodness! From Burrows, great recognition is there from Burrows. Cole to Jackson. Oh, this is some sort of start from Lauren. It's LJ wheels and spins and gets the finish inside. Led by the GOAT. Speaking of, there's two more. Yes. From the three-point line. Get it through some hands. Jackson gets open and gets it to go. Wallace, Mitchell for three to wow. end the first quarter. Mitchell with the steal into the open court. Can't get an easy bucket, Tiff Mitchell. Seen that a few times this afternoon. Oh. Haley picks it off with the steal. Indigo have pulled it off at the boom box and defeated Melbourne by five points. Tiana from the corner. It's blocked. Massive block. Nadio Poch. Another block from Poch. And Southside get out of jail. Sports fans, this is your chance to be part of history and celebrate Australia's greatest basketballer of all time. Yes, Larry Jackson! You are the queen of basketball and we love it! LJ Southside Flyers host the Sydney Flames in the first ever WNBL game at John Kane Arena. Oh, she's feeling it. She's seriously feeling it. You won't want to miss this history-making moment in women's basketball. Be part of a record WNBL crowd. Tickets on sale now at Ticket Tech. Do not underestimate the power of a good blind. Take this exhausted couch. Now it stands before you. Mm, magnifique. Even this cocktail of dead skin is gracefully waltzing. Da 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 da. 
DIY blinds change the ugly. Catch all the action of the Australian Open. Every match. He finds a way. Every court. What a match. Streaming for free on Nine Now. Gossip Girl here, your one and only source into the scandalous lives of Manhattan's elite. XOXO, Gossip Girl. Get your summer streaming on Nine Now. So baby, in 90 days, we're gonna be husband and wife. I was with her for five days, and then I proposed to her. She's so eager to be in love, she lets red flags just go. People say, 19 year old, she's just using you. Maybe she could be. 90 Day Fiance, get your summer streaming on Nine Now. Television's biggest show Hi. is back with love. I can see him being the one. And thunder on the very first night. The wedding bombshell wow. you've been waiting for. He's talking to my mom. He's talking to my dad. Explodes. Oh, my God. I need to confront him. I need to do this now. It all starts Monday, 7.30 on 9. Tune in to the WNBL show dropping weekly during the season and released across your favourite podcast network every Tuesday. Or watch the full vodcast at WNBL.basketball. The league MVP. We I'll never get used to that, by the way. That's a bit strange. <laughs> we can always come to you for a great inspirational quote. Join me, Megan Hustray, and my team of co-hosts, stars across the league, as we talk about everything that's happening on and off the court in the Signet WNBL. Hi Hoopers, I'm Tess Magin. I'm so excited to be offering virtual masterclasses this school holidays with She Hoops. Starting on the 9th of January at 5.30pm every Monday night, in this five week series we will be delivering a range of basketball skills. I will also take you through a number of mobility skills designed to keep your body active and engaged. And the best part is that it's free. Go to shehoops.com.au to register now and secure your spot. The ultimate Grand Slam experience is on Nine Now. Incredible stuff! We've got every match on every court streaming for free. How good is that? Catch the thrilling highlights, follow your favourite players, and see the superstars whenever they play. The Australian Open, every match, every court streaming live and free on Nine Now. This year, Australia wants more, 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 everything. That's way more than I thought. More. Let celebrities, celebrities, snogging with the stars. More. Exciting. It's shocking. Unhinged. <laughs> Thrilling. <laughs> I don't mean dramatic, but should we call an ambulance? Uh, and more, more, Sophie Mung. You, the hundred. High five. What is happening? I will have nothing, but my ego is hot. Starts Tuesday, Feb 7 on 9. Australia's first celebrity chef vanishes without a trace. What happened when three people went prospecting and only one came back? The most public mafia hit in Australian history. In all her experience, Liz Hayes has never seen... It's the worst question in the world to ask somebody. Do you think your mother killed your father? Cases like these starts Wednesday after Married on Nine. It's the biggest WNBL season yet, and superstar Lauren Jackson returns. Turn it up. Don't miss a block, basket, or game winner. Just not steal the win. WNBL, live on 9 now.
A point at quarter time and put on 33 points in that second quarter to extend their advantage. Jess Webster and Kelsey Griffin with you this afternoon. Melbourne, they've beaten Perth twice this season, but are the tables about to be turned in the second half, Kelsey, to take a look at some of the halftime stats? I think for me, the one that really jumps out is rebounds. And it was clear from the beginning that Perth Lynx was going to clean up the glass. They know they're going to shoot threes. They know they're going to shoot them early and often. And when you have Alex Sharp and Chloe Bibby going in and cleaning up the glass, giving them extra possessions, they're just too lethal of an offense to give up seven offensive rebounds. And also, I mean, if you look conversely on the Melbourne Boomer side, they're shooting the ball at 53% you want more possession. So that is important also that if you're defensive rebounding well, that gives you more possessions. Not only does it take away from Perth Lynx opportunities, but it also adds to your own. And Perth, of course, without Sammy Wickham, if you've just joined us, she is out of today's contest with a back injury. They are confident she'll be ready to go for next week's clash against Townsville. But no Sammy, enter Amy Atwell. She has started the half time or started this match in the first half on fire. She's scored five free pointers, really taking her opportunity when she gets them. She really has. And I think it's great to see her playing with this level of confidence. Um, they knew, or she knew clearly they knew Sammy was going to be out. You spoke about what an impactful player it, uh, Sammy is for their side. But for Amy to step in with such confidence, I think on the back of her Opal selection, really showing what she can be from a floor spacing standpoint. What was impressive for me is while she was making them and shooting them, she was also prepared to put the ball on the floor and also contest those closeouts and really test the defense and rotations of Melbourne as well. So credit to Amy and her ability. I mean, these aren't wide open shots. There are hands up. Well, that one's wide open. <laughs> I mean, not all of them were. Some of them were really tough shots, but she's just showing with her feet set what she's capable of doing. Um, there's Robbie Ryan with the and one. Um, as well. So it has been by committee, but certainly Amy Atwell, you definitely don't want to go under ball screens on her. That's an adjustment I have no doubt that Melbourne will be talking about here to start the second half. Yeah, we'll certainly see how that does play out in the second half. She is playing extremely well. A season high, 25 points a couple of weeks ago against Southside. She has uh, 19 to half time, so it might be on her way towards a season high performance. But Melbourne, you would think will keep close attention on her in the second half. So the Lynx, they're fighting for a top four, top four position. Melbourne want to finish on top. It is the Lynx by 10 points at halftime as we get the third quarter underway. And Mitchell starts with a bang. And that's really good from Tiff Mitchell. She knew what the defense was going to give her. She knew Lauren Scherf was going to be in that deep drops. And she also backed herself as saying, I'm very capable of shooting that pull-up jump shot. Scherf gives it to Atwell, goes for another three, and why not? When you're on, you're on, but on that occasion, couldn't make it drop. Potentially lucky to get out of jail on that one, going under again on a ball screen. Tiff Mitchell kicks it out for Wallace for a long range three. That's really good from Boomers, getting feet in the paint, kicking it out, wide open shooters with uh, their feet set. And I think, you know, this is also probably where the Boomers are really missing. Mia Murray as well. I think her ability to provide floor, floor, excuse me, floor spacing and also be a facilitator definitely is something that they're missing. Scherf works on Nelson Adota and draws contact as well. So Scherf, we spoke about rebounds at half time. No surprises, she's leading the way with five in the first half, but uh, Ryan as well with four. She's played a really important role. So, yeah, they both have. You know, Lauren Scherf is someone who most often the the offense is being ran through and i don't necessarily mean that from a scoring standpoint but putting her in a position to be a decision maker a facilitator and then also deciding when to take the ball on but robbie ryan's done a great job in this game too but taylor burrows as well coming in and providing great minutes from the point so for me while amy atwell is having an incredible game and don't take anything away from what she's doing from the three-point line it is by committee that perth is doing this chef has a little bit of extra motivation her 200th game this afternoon, what a wonderful player in perhaps career best form at the moment. Nelson Adota to George in the corner, finds an opening and converts. That's really good from Kayla. Um, that dribble J is automatic for her and look to her, look for her to be a little more aggressive here in the second half. My goodness, Robbie Ryan with the dribble J three. You feel like every time that Melbourne has um, sparked something, 
Perth has responded in style. They really have, and I think that's where it's going to come down to the defensive end for Melbourne if they want to start chipping away at this lead. And, you know, credit to Perth and not only their starters and how they've started the game, but their bench points, what they've been able to produce off the bench. Depth is so important in this league, and for them to have 17 points off the bench, I think really speaks to the development that Ryan Petrick has done with his program. Mitchell loses her feet. Now Bruce sort of George to Wallace. She fires for a long range two, but it misses. Scherf cleans it up. Lovely pass in board to Atwell. Couldn't find the finish. There's a whistle on play. And that's something that Perth does um, in their offense. They almost lull you to sleep on that backdoor cut, assuming it's more the off or the shooter that's going to be coming up out of it. And Lauren Scherf's prepared to make that pass off the dribble. Amy Atwell definitely want that one back. Almost too easy for her. It's like she needed it to be 28 <laughs> feet away from the rim and a hand in her face. You made an interesting uh, observation a couple of moments ago about uh, Perth and, and how well they're coached. I mean, that they've made quite a number of changes in the offseason and maybe it's just taken them a while to gel. I mean, early in the season, we thought the top four was locked in and now all of a sudden they're really playing as a team with so much confidence and they're really pressing. Definitely, I think. The system, the system that Ryan runs, or excuse me, Coach Patrick runs, is very different to most systems in this league, and and it is very much um, personnel based. You need to have, you know, a ton of, I would say, confidence in your ability to shoot the ball, but also um, your willingness to play a role like Alex Sharp has and Chloe Bibby has, and trust that on one night it might be someone's turn, on another night it might be another person's. And, wear that over the course of the season. Um, Wally is able to draw contact on that, that jump shot. Um, and, and it is, it is one of those things that it's a, it's a long season, it's, it's not a sprint. So can you find form at the right time? Can you peak at the right time? And um, I think too, probably coming off the Worlds, Sammy Whitcomb coming off the Worlds, Steph Talbot, a lot of the Opals that came off the Worlds, their teams potentially had slower starts because it was such a monumental effort that they had to do. Um, to get up for that and then to prepare for this season as well. Momentum is everything, as you mentioned, heading into finals. So winning form is good form. And that's why this game's really important for Melbourne, even though they're on top of the ladder. Atwell off the rim. It, uh, it still is a very important game for Melbourne as well. As Mitchell adds two. Because they want to make sure if they're going to defend their title, they need to run into finals full steam. Exactly. And home court advantage becomes really important as well. Burrows kicks it out to Sharp for three. Not this time. This is good from the Boomers. Um, that's one and done. They're, they're owning the glass to start this third quarter, and, and that limits really the ability for Perth to have these second looks and, and get what they were previously. Oh, that pass from Nelson Adota looking for George. It's come off hands. And I think it will stay with the Boomers. So the margin was 10 at halftime, the way the links. Mel would have now cut it back to four. George to Wallace from the top of the arc, fires. Doesn't have the accuracy. Burrows down the other end to Scherf, working on George. What a battle that is. And great work from George. That's why she's one of the best. And that's what's going to, that's what, Boomers are going to need to do to continue to build this momentum as defensive rebounds can become so important. Wallace. Now to George from the corner, but denied by Scherf. Tallest player in the league, 198 centimeters and a 200 says, not today, Kayla George. That's great recognition from Scherf knowing Kayla's doesn't need much time on her release. Normally stays, Scherf normally stays in the paint, but was it get, able to get out there to contest the shot. Brewster, lovely pass finds Nelson Adota. What a catch from Adota to be able to collect that and finish. Two points the difference. As Bibby goes for it, and it's not a foul call, so it's gonna be a Melbourne ball. Yeah, I believe Kayla actually ended up blocking that off Bibby. 
So this will be important for the Lynx. Get it, need to buckle down here on defense, get a stop, and get out in transition and be and run like they were previously. Also making sure they're crashing the O-glass, get those second chance opportunities just in case um, their three-point shooting isn't the same as it was in the first half. Certainly making their move, they restricted Perth to just five points so far as got five and a half minutes left to play in the third. So margin back to two. Keeping the pressure on the visitors who've started well. But we know what an exceptional team this Boomer's outfit is. And as Brewster for a long range two is offline. Scherf battles for the rebound. Oh, she's turned it over to George, who gives it to Mitchell. Can't make them pay. Great hustle from both sides. Really good defense from Perth in transition. Another great defensive effort from Boomers. The um, execution here now, I reckon they're, they're playing the games being played at a little bit of an erratic pace, which probably is to the Lynx benefit. They do want to get out and run. So it'll be interesting now here to see what Boomers decide to, to run to execute. Are they going to look to get Kayla on a post up, potentially Nelson Dodo on a post up, or at least get feet in the paint and then potentially kick it out to an outside shot? Who does it uh, advantage, do you think, if it's played at a high pace? Definitely the Perth Lynx, for sure. Nelson Adota and scores a level. That was great from Tiff Mitchell. Got feet in the paint, collapsed the defense, and put Adota in a spot where she could be um, successful. Again, there you go. Perth responding great on the other end. A Wallace, bit of a hip and shoulder, and it is called an offensive foul. I think you were playing the wrong sport for a moment there. And Christy Wallace, like, she has that athletics, athleticism and the ability to get downhill. And sometimes I think it's just um, unnecessary what she does at the end, but it's all for trying to compete. She is a fierce competitor. And I think as she, as she matures and she develops and continues to play at this high level, she's only going to get better. I think people forget that this is her first season in the WNBL as a starting point guard. Our expectations are so high of her because we know what she can be, and she will be that. Um, and what she's done to come back off of her injuries is just remarkable and a testament to who she is as, as a person and a player. Certainly competitive with the capital C, as we just saw. That's a great block from Nelson Adota down the other end. That was really good. And for the rest of her team to stay home and not over help and give up an open three and trust her in that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Lauren Scherf. So two points, the way of the Lynx, less than five to play in the third. Clinch Hoykart into the action, gives it to Atwell for another three. She is putting in some performance this afternoon. She really is, remarkable display. Wallace to George, bounces it to Nelson Adota. Working on Scherf, but she loses it. Really great defense there from, from Lauren Scherf to not let her have deep position, but then also for Robbie Ryan to go in and dig on the post as she was trying to back her down. Back her down. Great team defense from Perth. Here is Ryan. Misses, and George cleans it up. Perth advantage, now back out to five. Wallace Burrows trying to do her best work on the floor. Perth do come up with it. Ryan down the other end, kicks it out. Clinch Hoy card. No. But they win the rebound. Atwell falls just short. This game is certainly lifted in intensity. It really has. I think it's good for Melvin to actually have a walk down set up. Great execution, unfortunately didn't make the shot, but I think it's to their benefit to play at that tempo and turn it into a half-court game. Scherf just gifts it to Mitchell. She races down the other end. She's dangerous in this position. She goes to ground and she's off to the line. And I believe that might be her first, oh, that's Robbie Ryan's first foul, actually. So Mitchell's up to 16 points for the Boomers. Nelson Adota, she's up to 13. Wallace as well has contributed with 13. And for Perth Atwell, she's up to 22 points. Ryan with 13. So uh, they are your top scorers so far.
that rebound count that we spoke about at half time. Perth leading 32 to 25. And Scherf, she's in double double range. She's got eight rebounds and six points. I think Perth is doing a great job of, of pushing the tempo and playing at a pace. And, and Coach Petrick knows that, you know, mistakes will happen in that. There'll be turnovers or they'll, you know, be missed executions, but trusting that they'll have enough possessions in their game and they shoot a high enough percentage that they'll score enough points to win a game. And I think for the Boomers, they have to really pick and choose and be smart about when they push in tempo versus when they need to execute in the half court and really um, try to pick apart Perth's defense. Clinch Hoy card working on George, but she's fouled. That was pretty impressive play by Hoycart. Um, not necessarily something you would always expect her to do to take Kayla George one on one, but she felt she had the advantage and got downhill and got to the rim. She was great last week against Bendigo or a few days ago. It was lose track of the days. She really was. She played really, really important minutes, especially because Lauren Scherf got into foul trouble um, and really provided a, a presence for, for Perth inside and played her role to a T, facilitated, got on the glass, um, and did what they needed to get the win. Nine points and six rebounds, which was a season high for her against Bendigo. And has a couple of free throws today. So the Boomers, they drew scores level halfway through this third term. The Lynx back out to a five-point advantage. Important minutes as we tick down to three-quarter time. Hopefully the Boomers will look to, to get their feet in the paint again and give what, uh, take what the defense gives them, especially with Lauren Scherf on the bench here, how they can attack getting inside. Yeah, they've been great from two-point range so far today. George, a oh, bit of miscommunication there. And that's tough. When it, when a cutter goes, you're going to throw it. So it's, it's hard. Um, you got to trust that your teammate's going to cut when they say they're going to back cut. But opportunity for Perth. Taylor Burroughs has been great for them off the bench. Alex Sharp has as well in her starting spot today. Gandini fires for three. Can't convert. Oh, Boomers might have lost it, and they have. Great up the floor pressure from Perth Lynx, doing just enough to disrupt any kind of offensive transition from Melbourne. Melbourne needs to be smart, picking and choosing when they push the ball versus when, when they execute in the half court. And credit to, to Perth really disrupting and making it difficult for them to, to control the tempo of the game. Yeah, they haven't found any rhythm, have they, Melbourne? They haven't. Here's Burroughs driving. It's a great conversion. And she's off to the line as well. And that's another foul on George. Really good. Can't say enough good things about Taylor Burroughs coming off the bench. Um, no, she want, like, you know she wants to get downhill to her left. And even though you know she wants to do it for her to be able to do that and then finish through contact on a long Kayla George is, is not easy. So playing really great minutes, especially in the absence of Sammy. And she's already up to a season high. Nine points now for Taya Burrows. Without Sammy Whitcomb, this has been really impressive from the Lynx so far. But can they go the distance against this quality Boomers outfit? Davidson gets it back from George and now a good child fires for three. Doesn't have enough on it. That was a great defensive effort from Perth. You can see they're just irritating. Boomers are getting frustrated because they're bumping on every cut. They're not getting anything easy. They're up and in full court pressure. And they're frustrating the Boomers. That's going to impact how they how they feel when they catch and shoot, what kind of rhythm they're in offensively. So it's a credit to the, to the defense that Perth is playing. And that leads back out to eight. They led by 10 at half time. Here's Gandini. Got to clinch Hoycard in the corner. Goes all the way back to Burrows. And she's fouled. By Paige Burrows. A few Burrows out there today. I think that's whether it was recognition or um, trying to make something with late shot clock to be able to either draw foul pressure or get on the rim. Really heads up play by, by a young point guard. So 
So you'd be disappointed if you were the Melbourne coaching staff at Drew level. But uh, now that lead, well, the deficit's back out to eight, but on the, Perth, on the other side of the coin, if you're in the Perth camp, you're pretty happy with being able to respond to what the boomers have thrown at you. Oh, absolutely. For Perth to be able to, to back up after playing Wednesday um, and play this play to their system, to play on their terms, that you'd be really, really happy. And, and it has been by committee. You know, a lot is talked about Perth starters, but for their bench to have the impact that they're having, you know, 21 bench points, that's huge. Um, and makes such a big difference, especially in a long season like this season. And we're perhaps seeing a breakout performance from the young 21-year-old Taya Burrows. So here's George. Gives it to Goodchild, gets it back. Will she fire for three? She will. Can't make a count, but they win the rebound. George this time gives it to Mitchell. And she can't find the finish. Perth come up with a rebound. Margin back out to that game high, 10 point lead. And there's a call made by the umpire. Is there a foul? There is, like it going to the line, shooting foul shots. Looked like it was an off the ball foul, potentially. Mm. And it is, it is Edwards who's heading to the line. Christy Wallace, the only one to look in foul trouble as far as uh, having three fouls. But certainly when it comes down to team fouls and giving up foul shots, you don't want to mm. on free throw box out. So important. That was huge. Perth did a great job. Bendigo game down the stretch. Got an offensive rebound off a free throw that ended up giving them the go-ahead basket. Into the last 30 seconds of the third. Sharp. Gets the rebound off the Gandini shot, but she can't add to the tally. So last chance for Melbourne down the other end. Good child from the corner. They need this. So Burrows is giving away a foul. Perth's probably pretty lucky for good child not to make that she's a very very good three-point shooter and can heat up at any time zero from two today for good child from three-point range i think this is two in a, in a game like this and, and similar in, in bendigo's law lo or melbourne's uh, loss to bendigo the absence of mia murray that veteran experience her ability to space the floor and, and facilitate too i think just goes to show I, everyone's so important great defense from perth don't know if Sheriff got off in time. So that'll do us. It's three quarter time. And what a fight back from Perth after Melbourne. Drew scores level during that third quarter. They head into the last change in the lead by 11 points, 73 to 62. And I think, you know, whilst the rebounding was the, the story of the halftime, I think bench, bench points becomes the story of the game so far. 24 bench points for Perth to five bench points for Melbourne. Um, that's putting a lot of pressure on five players to be able to produce enough offensive firepower. And Perth is playing freely. They're not, uh, Melbourne isn't dictating a lot on the defensive end. So Perth's able to get lots of second chance opportunities, but also for players to be able to come in off the bench and have confidence. But Melbourne's a very experienced team. They know what it takes coming off their championship last season. So it's certainly a lot of basketball left, and I think it'll be a great hit out in this fourth quarter. Melbourne, they have match winners all over the court, but is there anyone in particular uh, that you feel um, will and needs to stand up in this final quarter? Let's take a look at some of the three-quarter time stats. I don't know. In my experience playing basketball, you never want to leave it to one player. I think it has to be by committee, especially with such a t tough team like Perth and what they're capable to do offensively and honestly what they've been able to do defensively against the Melbourne Boomers. But I think it has to be um, everyone and being smart and really playing to their strengths. I think they've looked, Melbourne's look best when they get feet in the paint and then can have kick outs. So I'm looking from, or I would expect to see more of that down the stretch, but it's probably it comes from the defensive end because when they've gotten stops and can run, they've also looked really well, or really good, excuse me. Do those uh, three-point stats trouble you from a Melbourne perspective? Four of 18. 
Well, we said that Melbourne doesn't historically shoot a lot of threes, but that is what I think Perth is prepared to give up is threes or long twos. So it doesn't surprise me that they're shooting a lot, and I think they're capable of it. But like I've like I've said before, you know, not having you know your floor spacer and Mia Murray, I think is really hurting them in this game but they do have capable three-point shooters. I think it's getting those shots off of rotation, getting those shots off of collapsed defense instead of contested threes. We'll definitely see that um, three-point percentage, percentage increase for Mel Melbourne. So your top scorers uh, for the Boomers, Mitchell, she's on 13. She's also none for four and three-point attempts. You feel like if she can get a few early looks and sink some of those, I can really fire her up. Uh, Nelson Adota with 15 and for the Perth Atwell. She's leading the way with 22 and Ryan and Burrows with 13 each. So final quarter underway. It is Perth by 11. Get ready for some fireworks. Scherf to Atwell, kicks it out to Ryan. Now back to Scherf, working on George. Has a fumble, regains, then has to pop it up for a long range too, and that was well short. Great, great defensive stance from, from Melbourne, I'm sure. A turnaround left-handed hook shot from the free throw line isn't necessarily what Perth was looking for, but they had to get a shot up in that situation. See what how Perth can respond on the defensive end on this side. Here is Mitchell. Into George. That one also falls short. They hustle for the rebound. Good fight. Bruce out of George. Now to Mitchell. She wants to make something happen for her side. That is brilliant from Tiffany Mitchell. And that's the Melbourne Boomers taking a page out of the Perth Lynx book. Um, fighting, scrapping for that offensive rebound, that extra possession. And then Tiff Mitchell doing what she does best, getting downhill to her left hand for the and one finish. What's interesting about that that rebounding contest was they actually had great rebounding position. The Perth Lynx, no one just no one grabbed it. Completes the three-point play. Does Mitchell? Ryan down the other end to clinch Hoycard. Now Gandini back to clinch Hoycard. Lovely. Really great two-man game from two bench players coming in and making an impact. They've got a great blend of experience and uh, and young blood, if you like, to Perth. They really do. So Wallace coughs it up. Ryan down the other end makes them pay. Great rotation from Perth out of that ball screen defense. They knew they know Kayla likes to pick and pop. Rotated early. Great heads up play from Robbie Ryan. Game high 12 point lead as Brewster for a three point attempt. She's offline. So it's starting to get away for Melbourne. Clinch Hoyka wants to get in on the action. How does the umpire see this? Ooh, and that, I believe, is four fouls on Wallace. Um, will be interesting to see what Chris Lucas decides to do. Keeps her in, trusts her. To not pick up another one, because there's a lot of game left and they need her out there. Ryan, you can see Wallace trying to infringe there. Ryan misses and Mitchell cleans it up. Gives it to George. They will retain possession. Be interesting here for the Boomers. Oh. I think this is a good substitution. Get it. Nelson Adota back in, match up against Lauren Scherf, but also potentially create that inside presence that Boomers are in need of. Wallace has lost it. This is a good test for Wallace. A couple things haven't gone her way now. How can she mentally stay in it, respond, still be an impactful player for her team? Credit to Perth. Scherf to Ryan. Great shot. Great execution from Perth. They are stepping up to the plate, Perth. 14 points the margin now as Mitchell can't find her first three. That's five missed attempts from three-point range for Tiff Mitchell. And another one-and-done offense 
for the Boomers. Perth prepared to give up those shots and trust over the course of a game. It'll end up in their favor. Better defense from the Boomers, causing a turnover. Now I'll come down to execution here on the, the offensive end for the Boomers, but the Perth defense has been great. They've been, they're prepared to give up certain shots and those are the shots that the Boomers are taking. So we head to a timeout in this final quarter. This timeout is brought to you by DIY Blinds. To fit out your home with Australian made designer quality window furnishings at the best prices, head to diyblinds.com.au to order your free samples today. So we've spoken all match that Melbourne will come. They will come at you. They're a quality outfit, experienced outfit. They've been there, they've won the title. But with seven minutes to play in the final quarter, they're facing a 14 point deficit. How do they get themselves out of this hole? Well, I think shot selection is really important. Um, execution, but also defense and not giving up second chance opportunities and probably foul discipline I'd throw in there as well. I mean, which is a lot of, a lot of things to, to take care of, but they're all things that that Melbourne can do. Um, but you have to give a ton of credit to Perth. They are playing the game on their terms. They're trusting the system. They're trusting their schemes. And they're saying, yep, they may make one or two, three tough shots down the, out of the course of a game, but um, eventually there will be enough opportunities for us and we will shoot at a high enough percentage that we will come out on top. And it's trending to be in that direction, but the positive thing for the Boomers is there's still so much in their control if they can get the game back on their terms and execute um, down the stretch, get points in the paint, get feet in the paint. Um, but so much credit to Perth's bench. I think it's just been remarkable to see the display that they've put on. 26 bench points for Perth this afternoon. And Melbourne might have turned it over here. An offensive screen or a moving screen call on Melbourne. I'm not sure if that was on a Dota or George. Um, certainly not, not, not the uh, play that you would want coming out of the timeout from Chris Lucas and his side. No, and I was just about to say before that that uh, we know Melbourne can score and score quickly, but uh, they can't do it if they turn the ball over. That's exactly right. They don't have too many turnovers. It's just been costly ones at the wrong moments. Atwell can't continue her run. Nelson Odota with an important rebound. They need to get going, the Boomers. George to Mitchell. She loses it and then kicks it back out to George. Flares it across to Brewster and puts up a two. That was really great with ball reversal, get feet in the paint from Tiff Mitchell, collapse the defense, attack a closeout, and get a really good looking shot. Margin 12. Scherf. Long range two. It's time. Wallace showing her competitiveness, goes all the way. Doesn't have the finish. This is slipping away from Melbourne. Yeah, they definitely want that one back, but there you go. There's they'll another, get it back. Yep, there's another defensive stop. That's what they want. Be interesting here again, what Melbourne decides to do on the offensive end. They were able to get great success with Tiff getting downhill and trusting that she'd make the right read out of it, get a ball, reser ball reversal. Do they do something similar this time down? George puts a shot up. It's another miss. Another chance gone begging for Melbourne. Five and a half to play, last quarter. They trail by 12. Perth at the other end. Scherf, oh, she's turned it over to Mitchell. Running down the other end. Oh, she loses her footing and then it goes out of play. Oh, it is just getting from bad to worse, I think, for Melbourne. Oh, that's really unlucky. Uh, you can see the disappointment. Hopefully Tiff's not injured. Definitely don't want injuries by decals that are wet on the floor. That's a you know, player's nightmare. Um, so I hope that hope she's okay from that one. Let's take another look. Yeah, you can just see her slip on the decal, unfortunately. Um, possession you'd certainly want back, but at no fault to any of the players out there. It's just horrible luck, really. So can Perth hold on? Or is there one last charge? Bibby falls short. 
Nelson Adota cleans it up to Mitchell. Oh, she loses it again. Another turnover from Mitchell. Bibby down the other end. Puts a shot up and that hurts. That hurts the Boomers. Man, that, is, that was not an easy shot either that Bibby just made. I think what's even more impressive about what Perth is doing is Amy Atwell had 19 points going into halftime. She currently sits at 22. So while she's having an incredible game, it's, it's, it's even scoring across the board. Every single player that's gone on the court for Perth has scored. And it's really, really tough to beat a team that's prepared to share, move the ball, back themselves, have confidence. And then also, they just got three turnover or three missed shots slash turnovers in a row on those possessions. So I think from from the hole that Melbourne's trying to dig themselves out of, it's gonna come down to execution and defense. But there is that chance they can always do it. Absolutely. This time now is brought to you by Aussie Hoops. They had their biggest year to date last year with over 42,000 participants registering to a local Aussie Hoops centre nearby. Aussie Hoops is a perfect introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged 5 to 10, whether your little one's a seasoned basketball fan or simply looking to get out there and give it a go. We have no doubt they'll have an absolute ball of a time. So register now at aussiehoops.basketball to kickstart your basketball journey. You make a really important point there, Kelsey, when the, when a team is showing this much depth and just getting such contributions across the board, they really are hard to beat. Do you think this is perhaps one of the best team performances you've seen from any side this year? Uh, I was on the receiving end of a very impressive team performance from Southside. So I don't know if it's the most impressive one, um, but there certainly have been a lot of them this season in the WNBL. And I think it goes to show you the, the depth that this league has and the amount of talent that's in Australia. Um, you could almost say you could add a couple more teams to the WNBL. I reckon there's that much talent floating around. I'll add an asterisk, best team performance without Sammy Winkham. <laughs> <laughs> so here is Scherf. Misfires on the three, but it is a 20 point lead to Perth. Four and a half to play in the final quarter. And it's just really been from the tip, an impressive um, performance from Perth as far as what they do, their style of play, their system, and what they want to be known for. Um, certainly, there'd be some possessions there that Melbourne would want back. Good execution there from Wally hitting that bread and butter jumper, but um, certainly a game that I think Melbourne can learn a lot from. Um, but, you know, the game's not over yet. They can certainly battle back here in these last four minutes. Scherf to Burrows. Hasn't she been impressive, the youngster? Oh, can't get that to drop. And Melbourne, they do have a tough challenge next week. They take on Bendigo. There's no easy games in the WNBL. That's something I can definitely guarantee you. Nelson Adota with the putback. It's certainly a, it's such an exciting run to finals. And just like that, it's 10 points. So there's still plenty of game left in this one. Melbourne definitely aren't going to go down without a fight. Fight right to the final whistle. Perth needs some points and Atwell provides. It's a steadying bucket. That was really good. I will clearly feel the momentum, momentum swing and knew her side needed a basket. Got downhill. Finished a pretty highly contested t uh, layup on that. Um, it's great to see floor wipers out there making sure there's no more players slipping. Last thing we want, especially in these crucial final minutes of the game is any turnovers, unforced turnovers, just because the court isn't safe to be on. At well up to 22 points now. She stepped up be beautifully this afternoon as Wallace adds another two. And staying in touch, three minutes to play, 10 points is the comeback on. The defense needs to stand up in this moment. And the game's turning into more of a half-court game now, so this will be interesting to see how Perth goes. Not as free-flowing. They get the rebound. Time's ticking down. Wallace and one. And that's great to see from Wallace. Um, you know, there was a few plays. You could see she was really frustrated. Missed the layup. 
got her fourth foul. So seeing her mature, being able to take what the game's giving to her, not, not get too frustrated and take herself out of the game and potentially even um, eat into this deficit farther. Big free throw coming up for Christy Wallace. Sorry, here we go. Very similar to the, the fourth quarter of the Bendigo Perth game that happened as well. So we'll see what Perth's learned, their ability to, to play this half court style and execute, get the shots they want. Yeah, quite similar, isn't it? They had to hang on against Bendigo. And the same is happening now as Ryan adds two more. That's a steady up. Great take from Robbie Ryan. Knew Christy Wallace had four fouls, wasn't going to be able to play the defense she probably wanted to. Had a really good finish. Down the other end. She's rising, Wallace, but is there enough time? Two minutes left. Seven points the difference. Perth with ball in hand. Perth will want to eat up some clock here. Ryan finds Scherf. As steady as ever. And a timeout called. This is really great display from Robbie Ryan. Um, taking on that point guard role down the stretch. Whitcomb's often had the ball in her hands and been that um, play caller facilitator, go-to player to close out games for Perth. So it's been really great to see Robbie Ryan's really, I won't say a rival because she's been playing and playing well for Perth for a while, but um, you know, in the absence of Sammy Whitcomb really having to take on that role, it's done an incredible job. And a season high, 19 points for Robbie Ryan. Her previous best was 15 against Bendigo last week. So she's put in a couple of excellent performances. Her average is, is eight points a game. So she has really contributed well tonight at, well, up to 24. So those two have really put on a great show in the ab ab absence of Whitcomb. Well, and it's, it's not just 19 points and 24 points. They're efficient points, you know. Robbie Ryan's shooting at 57% from the field, 54 from two and 66% from three. Like, that is impressive as a point guard. It's not easy to do when you're thinking about facilitating an offense and then knowing when to call your own number. Similar for Christy Wallace, you know, she's been able to get a little bit going down the stretch here, but I don't think that's ever really appreciated the mental toll of being a point guard. That's taken it. I speak as if I'm a point guard. I'm definitely not, wouldn't want to be, but that mental toll that it takes on a guard to have to know what to run their offense, who to run it for, but yet also to know when to call your own number. It's, it's quite a burden. So congratulations to Robbie Ryan and really putting on a show tonight. So final messages in this timeout. What do you think is being said? Well, execution, they're going to need to increase the tempo to create enough possessions in this game from a offensive standpoint from the boomers um, and then it, it's going to come down to defense as well they have to get stops and they can't foul Perth's definitely going to want to milk milk the clock get as much out of a possession as possible and still get a good look nelson adota has a couple to beat does really well tough finish Seven points the margin. Can Ryan find the nail in the coffin? Gives it to Bibby. Has lost it, but oh, big call. And it'll remain a Perth ball. We'll have to get another look at this. That is a big call. This is where I feel like WNBL is missing video review because I feel like NBL has it. It would be great, especially in these last two minutes. The officials do the best job they can, but it is tough in this league. Ryan to inbound. Long range pass has been picked off by Nelson Adota. Gives it to Mitchell. Needs to convert and does. Great heads up play from Nelson Adota and Mitchell to be able to finish the job. This will be good for Perth. They still have plenty of time. Don't need to rush. Use the clock, but also get a good look. And they're doing just that. Shot clock, though, down to seven. Ryan needs to put a shot up. Oh, she's. Turned it over, she dives on top of it. It goes out of play, it's a Melbourne ball. And that's a big ask from Kayla George to be defending the other team's point guard, but she gave Robbie Ryan a cushion knowing she's more of an attack the basket, dribble jump shooter, and was able to get the defensive stop. This is the way that I think the Boomers would have liked to have had the game for most of the game in the half court. 
Um, but Perth, for the most part, has been able to play a free-flowing game. And this is what's really interesting for Perth in fourth quarters. Typically, the game becomes a half-court game. And that's why it can be so difficult to close it out. However, they were able to do that against Bendigo. So they definitely can do it against the Boomers as well. Melbourne need to put up some big shots here. George can't deliver. Oh, Ryan! She clashes with good child. That was a big ball to be won. Wow, that was um, AF AFLW-esque, I reckon, taking a specky. Crossed with rugby, crossed <laughs> with a bit of everything. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't even think Goodchild knew what hit her. Just, um, yeah, both contesting, contesting the rebound. Um, great heads up play from Robbie Ryan. Desperation play, if you will, knew her team needed that possession and went and, went and got it. So it'll be a Lynx ball. Five points of difference, 40 seconds on the clock. It is possible. And Melbourne will need to find something special and Perth, they just need to keep cool, calm and collected in this moment. Let's take a quick look at the top scorers. Wallace and Mitchell, 22 each for the Boomers. Atwell, 24 for Perth and Ryan with 19. And you can see Wallace there, a little bit of foul trouble on four, but she has done well after she, you can see the disappointment on her face when she got her last personal foul. She has. She's responded really well. I think that's one thing that might be um, uh, maybe not the most um, thing that Wally, or maybe a detriment of Wally's skill set is her competitive nature and how hard she is on herself, that sometimes she takes herself out of the game. But what's been promising to see in this game is that she hasn't. She took that time out, took that breather, and then came back and has really been huge for, for Melbourne down the stretch. Um, along with, you know, Nelson Nadota's defense, Kayla's defense, and then being able to convert from Tiff Mitchell. But I think for Perth, this is a really great opportunity. You know, they're pushing for finals. Um, you know, they're playing like a finals team. And to go deep into finals and win a championship execution down the stretch is going to be really important. So this is another opportunity on the road. You, you know, if you don't have home court finals, you have to win on the road. Um, can you execute? Can you get the shot you want when it's not just a free-flowing transition game? It's going to be such a huge win to take into next week playing Townsville twice and what will probably decide the top four. Although the way this competition is shaping, it probably won't be decided until the final round. Which is exactly how you want it. Absolutely. It's been a fantastic Signet WNBL season and we're not done yet. Here's Ryan working on George. Happy to milk the clock. Shot clock down to five. What can Scherf produce? Great block from Nelson Adota. Huge block. Um, great recognition by Lauren Scherf. She didn't shoot too early. She tried to get used as much of the shot clock as possible, which is important in a two possession. Could they make it a three possession game on this execution? Probably going to be a lob play out of bounds. Be interesting to see what happens. I would love a three. Melbourne, they've only committed four of 21. But this to seal the win. And Chloe Bibby comes up with a clutch shot. Huge shot, huge shot. And that'll do it. It's an offensive foul called against Melbourne. So Perth with 13.9 seconds on the clock will have the last say. Impressive, impressive effort from the Lynx. Burrows has gone down off plate. Hope she's okay. And I think that's Christy Walsh's fifth foul. She'll go and have a rest. It's been a bit of a frustrating night for the Boomers. It definitely has, but you, you can't say enough good things about Perth and how they've come out and played. You know, when you look at the contribution off the bench, 26 points, um, Amy Atwell, and not announcing herself, she's been playing great, but what a statement she made in that first half, um, you know, to score 19 points and a half, but then her team around her, you know, for every player to score is, is remarkable, and that shows Perth's willingness to share the ball and back each other. Um, and then they got stops when they needed to. Um, Melbourne's a very, very capable offensive team, even though they are missing Tess Nadge and they are missing Mia which are really important players in what they're trying to do and what they're trying to achieve. But um, Perth came out and played the game on their terms. And this youngster has been very impressive. 15 points, nine from nine at the free throw line. She has, but it hasn't just been her offense. Look at her defense, that kind of tenacity and playing nonstop. 
from their bench, I think, is really what was so important to finish out this game. So Perth's winning ways continue. They have won seven in a row and they've taken down the ladder leaders, Melbourne. They've won 91 to 82 and their fight for a top four position continues. Kelsey Griffin, we've spoken about it all afternoon, but this really has been an impressive performance from start to finish. They led by a point at quarter time, by 10 at the half, 11 at three quarter time, Melbourne kept coming and coming and coming. Drew scores level uh, midway through that uh, third quarter and they made a late run for it, but uh, they stood tall and stood strong when they needed to and they've come away with another win. Outstanding. It really has been. And, you know, Melbourne, I think, would definitely look back and say we want certain possessions back or we were unfortunate to have this go, but it really was from the tip that the Lynx came out. They were a force to be reckoned with on the glass when they weren't making their shots early. And then Amy Atwell hit, heated up for that patch. But it was a complete team effort. And they lulled the Boomers into getting taking the shots that they wanted the Boomers to take and trusted Ryan Petrick's system and scout that over the course of the game, it would end up in their favor. Um, but the Boomers will learn from this. You know, they've got they've got high aspirations and what they want to achieve this season, and, and they're still figuring some things out. And I think, you know, having me and all part of it is has been big, and I don't think it's talked about enough. So they're gonna they'll be fine. The Boomers are gonna bounce back. But credit to Perth and, and what they're doing, especially with um, their caps and captain being gone. Absolutely. So without Sammy Whitcomb, they get the job done and they did it in style. As you take a look at some of the full-time stats, we mentioned at halftime that the rebound game was the talking point then. Uh, three, three pointers, Mel uh, Perth did really well um, to sort of curb uh, Melbourne Boomers. Uh, big uh, shot producers, to be honest. I mean, Kayla George and, and, uh, and Tiff Mitchell, I mean, they're obviously fantastic players, but they did really well to not let Melbourne get any kind of momentum. They really did, and, and you look at Melbourne Boomer's shooting percentage and you say, oh, well, you know, it's probably just an off night for them. And I would say, you know, people maybe miss some off um, open three-pointers that they'd normally make, but was it the fact that Perth Lynx disrupted their offense and made them shoot shots that they weren't really wanting to take or were high, lower percentage, highly contested shots? And so I think, yep, you could say, look, Melbourne could have probably played better, but you have to give credit to Perth and say, well, what did Perth do to put Melbourne in that position as well? Um, either way, it's a learning curve for both teams. Perth learning their depth, and or maybe they're not probably learning it. They're saying, finally, everyone's acknowledging the depth we knew we always had. And Melbourne saying, okay, here are some areas we need to tidy up as we make our run for finals. Have Perth a top four side in your mind? Perth, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Perth, Perth can be. Um, you know, I think there are five teams that are contention for those top four spots and I think it will take till the last round for it to shake out. So as you take a look at uh, round 13 next week and this exciting season continues, Perth, they play twice against Townsville at home in the West. They're going to be crucial games to decide the top four. Uh, Southside as well taking on Sydney, UC against Adelaide and Melbourne against Bendigo, the other pick of the bunch uh, there. A couple of, again, it just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it, Kelsey? It really does. And what will be interesting is, you know, the Perth Townsville games, they're both in Perth. So while it's a back-to-back, -back, it's almost actually a bit of a homestead for both teams. So it will be interesting to see. And that will really shake up the ladder position and see what happens. You know, if one team is able to get both or if they split them, um, could be really interesting. And I do think head-to-heads will come into play as the final four is decided later this um, season. So play more basketball to come in the Signet WNBL season. My name's Jess Webster. On behalf of myself, Kelsey Griffin, it was great to call with you this afternoon and our entire production team. We hope you enjoy the coverage and we will see you again next week.